Hello, everyone. Welcome to VOD of Consciousness with Cientier. I'm Cientier, and you can support me on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Cientier. And today, we are going to continue our way through the uh, Borless Pass. We are currently... Oh, yeah, you can see uh, Tolis is right over there. Uh, if you look on the map, the start area is up that way, and we come down through here, and, and kind of loop around. Um, so last time, we discovered how precise explosives need to be and I had very boring commentary while attempting to make a note uh, I need to I need to take a screenshot for the thumbnail and I neglected to do that for the uh, previous episode when I was getting things set up I was a little preoccupied with getting builds put together and all that sort of thing so that was a whoopsie so I needed to make a note to remember to do that and that things would be a little bit out of order with the screenshots as well so anyway that's neither here nor there that's just that's just uh, behind the scenes business so we blew up some snow so we could go kill a drake and now we need to go stop a siege uh and margaret needs to stop dropping preservation every 20 seconds um in a nowhere spot dies after a minute and a half that's pretty lengthy uh what it does by the way is every four seconds it heals an ally for 80 health at random uh it's a little bit imprecise but i thought i'd go ahead and give it a try since it has the benefit i guess you could say of being um, a ritual that would heal us, which is good, because she uh, does not have a ton of energy throughput, so I didn't want to try to give her something like one of these other things. I potentially could have given her an elite ranger skill, which you know I could do, but I kind of wanted to try having a decent amount of healing on her. But at this point, we need to stop the siege the main way we're going to do that is by getting covered in uh in empathies from not him from this guy over here uh who's going to need to go down very quickly because he's going to be very annoying with all of them empathies he's the target yep make sure he goes down cool uh, otherwise, you just have these engineers. Engineers don't fight or anything. They're just a load-bearing NPC that when you kill them, the um, trebuchet or Actually, these are ballista. Excuse me. The ballista, they're using uh, break. I actually want to go grab these because I don't remember if uh, breaking the siege causes... Okay, no, it just gives you morale boost. Well, where's the rest of the siege? It must be over this way. Hmm, it must be further on? I don't remember. It's been a real long time since I've done some of these early missions, which is part of why I wanted to do them again, incidentally. I guess the rest of the siege is behind this gate that we opened last time. You may not remember it. Uh, you may remember it. I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to you whether or not you remember anything. It's not up to me. But I opened this gate last time uh, with that lovely gate switch. And uh, I think the rest of the siege is probably going on over here. Yeah. You go towards Grubel's Gulch, which is a very strange name. But you can see the Dwarven architecture. They did a really good job with making Dwarven ruins in Guild Wars 2. I think that's uh, one of the things that they're quite successful at. Okay, so we want to take out these... Oh my goodness, Ice Golems hitting everybody with the Deep Freeze. Um, that was painful. Wow. There are some really crazy strategies you can do if you're being hit by a certain type of damage. There's some really crazy strategies you can do to try to make all enemies deal a specific type of damage. Um, specifically, you can use conflagrate. Is it conflagration or greater conflagration? Um, and winter. Uh, effectively, what one of those is is uh, actually we need to take care of the rider because that guy is a healer and that means he does things we don't want you ha okay um man i love myself some days it is so good so very effective this guy's throwing every single condition we're putting on him onto me. Um, 
You should be using wells more, dude. I don't know why this guy doesn't seem to realize that wells exist. Very bad at using them. Oh man, my inventory is full. I might throw out some of the weaker low level. Oh goodness gracious me. Um, so I don't want to just waltz into those ice golems because they're all going to AoE deep freeze us to death. Okay, it looks like they've split up. Uh, I'm going to use I Am Unstoppable because it gives me a gigantic chunk of armor. And for some reason, I like the idea of having a gigantic chunk of armor uh, when walking into a bunch of elementalists. Uh, these guys are a prime example of why I didn't want to bring minions, though. Okay, so I want to be careful about going too far forward. We're going to come around to the side and take out this engineer here. Uh, but I don't know what any of these guys' movement is going to look like, so I want to be really careful about engaging and then getting gigantic aggro piled. Um, so, yeah. It looks like that might not be a problem. That has got to be worth more than this. Uh, let's mark a protection itself. I want to throw out a Hexbreaker Rhea. Uh, yeah, okay. Now that's over. Oh, goodness. I am getting everything dropped on me. Shielding hands is not a huge deal. Elias is getting all of the pain handed to him. You. There we go. Empathy is about over. Okay, now I can attack again without incurring massive penalties. Oh, boy. All of our you can see why I don't want to be beset upon by a random pile of... Uh, ice golems in the middle of, of that, right? That would just be excruciatingly painful to have them suddenly come along and dump a bunch of damage on us. I think... Okay, now we just need to kill those last two groups. Gigantic pile of ice golems. Hopefully... It looks like that might be two groups, so hopefully they'll separate. This is one of the things that's really important, is managing your aggro. Uh, I don't want too many of them. If I switch to this... Yeah, interesting. The, um, the So what I just did is I switched to daggers, and the AI is like, oh, now that you're wielding daggers, you want to be on the front line. Um... Yeah, okay, so they hit us with a little bit of deep freeze, which I kind of expected. Um, but now I can get one of them dazed. And that'll end his threat. I feel like I never notice rejuvenation, but it's probably because it just, like, DPSs itself out so quickly. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought would happen. Just getting that off of me. Oh, goodness. I am not in a good spot. Uh, okay. Let's, let's go back a bit and let's target this guy down. Hmm, not sure how viable... Oh, yeah, well, if he's going to blood offering, it's certainly going to be more viable. Oh, man. Pushing damage on this guy. Trying to get him down.
Uh, I'm tired of this empathy. Tell you what. Okay, this guy's almost down. Let's just finish him off. Oh, those are 70 damage empathies. Those are those are no good. Okay, I'm going to kind of stand back out of the fight until this empathy is over because it is dealing entirely too much damage. Okay, so I'm going to wait a little bit before engaging the ice golems because you might notice my team's energy is pretty low and I would rather it not be that low. So I'm going to drink some water because it's a good idea. It's interesting, actually, looking at my party. Um, it would actually be really beneficial to have a second uh, blood ritualist just to be able to get Elias's energy up. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Oh, okay, yeah. Do that on me and the ranger. Um, Margaret the Sly as a ranger has plus 30 armor against elemental damage. Which means... She takes half damage from elemental sources. I'm just grabbing this gold because there's about to be a cutscene to trigger and we'd have to run back to grab it. And that'd be really annoying. Uh, I think there was a cutscene anyway. Maybe we actually had to run inside here? Oh, maybe we have to actually just run up here and talk to Prince Rurik. Um, Prince Rurik is up here trying to negotiate passage. It mentioned it at the beginning of the last episode with some mission objectives. Figure out how his negotiations with King Jealous Iron Hammer are going. Ooh. Ah, my good and excellent friends. I got pinned down here in Crocs Hollow when the Stone Summit attacked. Good thing we arrived when we did. I owe you many thanks. I would raise a pint of Dwarven Ale in your honor, but there is still much work to do. Well, perhaps when everyone is safely through Borla's Pass. Agreed, but now I must go back and lead our people to Grubel's Gulch. Th that's where we're at right now, by the way. If I'm remembering correctly. Or maybe it's the next town. Maybe we're almost done with this mission. You go on ahead and clear the way. Secure a shelter for the night, and then we'll see about that ale. As you wish, my prince. Dwarven ale is an item you can get in the game. Talk to King Ironhammer. He'll help you garner safe passage into the gulch. I will see you there. I'm remembering the rest of this mission now. The good dwarfs of Veldramor thank you for your help. We do what we can to honor the old alliances. Then the Veldramor dwarfs will honor them as well. Your prince's request for passage through the mountains has been granted. Take this enchanted torch and light the beacon outside Grubel's Gulch. My brother. Brecknar Ironhammer will open the gate for you once he sees the arcane flame. Your people will be safe in the gulch for the night. Uh, I wish I remember the name of this little Thank you, King Ironhammer. Of this little outpost. Anything for our friends. Now, waste no more time here. Night will be upon you, and your people will freeze in the cold without shelter. Follow me to the gate. Yeah, so this last part, basically, there's a, a Dwarven Civil War going on between the Stone Summit and the Deldrumer Dwarves. Uh, King Jalus Ironhammer is the leader of the Deldrumer Dwarves. Um, and, yeah, Rurik is just kind of repeating his dialogue. Um, so, we're in this kind of, like, outpost fortress. Or... <laughs> Fortress Fort sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure what this one's called. It's just like right here. Uh, but we need to take this torch. Uh, this is one of the things you'll see in the game where they will take a mechanic and then they'll kind of repeat it a number of times. So like right now, it's like we started off by needing to take a torch and light stuff with it. And then it's, it's continuing and having us take this torch, a new torch, to light new set of beacons. And there will be some more beacon lighting in the future. Um, but we have a bunch of Stone Summit Dwarves, and once we clear out the Stone Summit Dwarves, we can begin using this Enchanted Torch to, uh, actually do stuff. Um, I kind of want to fight down these guys here. Oh, Stone Summit Hammer, you say? 
Uh, what do I got? What do I got? That's like these. Oh, this armor is better to grab. Um, I'm just dropping stuff. Some of these things will probably automatically go to my inventory if I finish this quick enough. And we're actually really close to the end of this mission. But I kind of don't want to risk it, if that makes sense. I mean, technically, I could drop Gwen's Broken Flute without much loss. Um, what I really need to do is I need to start storing some of my items on my heroes uh, and start using them there and stuff. I'm just... It would work work out better to open up some inventory space. I haven't done that. We're at the point where I can start actually getting kind of more maximum use out of uh, leadership. If I had 18 or 16 leadership, because you get energy for every two points of leadership. Um, if I had a little bit more leadership, or if I had 16 leadership, which is kind of expensive to have from a minus 75 health standpoint. Uh, I could use that to get 8 energy out of uh, my allies in uh, the Stoliac Rider actually needs to be going down. Oh, this is not this is not a good situation we're in. Okay, I don't really want to attack with double that on. Nope. Okay, I'm okay if Margaret the Sly goes down. Okay, so we just had a bunch of allied dwarves show up, so that makes me a lot more comfortable with the situation. Uh, not perfectly comfortable or anything, but they will add a bit of additional um, damage. Margaret is really getting things... Okay. Um, we're going to back up. Because we're getting our butts handed to us by just a gigantic pile of dwarves, as you may have noticed. Um, so I would rather not wipe at the very end of the mission. That seems like bad form. Uh, oh, that is just... Uh, okay, hopefully the groups will disperse and not march all the way into us. I would like them not to march into us if they could, you know, please not do that. Okay, so it looks like they might be heading back. Basically, I can pop everybody up really quickly with We Shall Return. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to be near them. Um, actually, I'm going to temporarily disable that on Morgu. So that's probably not the thing that I want to have happen right now. Um, but the other thing is I want to be careful not create a bunch of aggro when I do that. Um, so I'm actually going to pin my heroes over here. This is a fairly sizable group. So I'm going to watch their wandering. This is where things get interesting, right? So if I come up here and pop that, they all come up. And because of where I positioned the flag, they all run away. So this is not like the end of the world or anything. Um... I just wanted to kind of get them rearranged. Margaret even went down so quickly that she didn't acquire a ton of death penalty. So this group is coming at us now. Uh, so that's actually not a bad thing. Um, I'm actually targeting this sage because the sage's empathy is extremely deadly to my party. Or at least to me and Margaret. So I want it gone. Uh, so I am trying very hard to stop him from doing stuff. And it looks like the healer already went down because it's focusing so much on everyone else. Um, wow, he's really running far afield. Okay, cool. That went a lot smoother. As it turns out, not getting overwhelmed makes things go better. Um, so I'm going to wait a little bit just to get energy pars back. I'm going to re-enable that. Um, I turned it off because I didn't know if he would, like, run forward on his own, start resing people and causing things to misbehave. Because uh, heroes will do that sometimes. I do like them to have resurrection skills on hand, uh, particularly in hard modes. So that way we can avoid, like, a full party wipe as much as possible. But sometimes they are very dumb about it. 
that's that's kind of kind of my point here. Um, okay, we're gonna come around to the side, and as previously indicated, I want these guys down because empathy is bad news for us, and I don't want them spamming it too much. Okay, cool. That guy's down. Now we want to get the Stoliac Rider down. Okay, cool. Days on him. He'll go down very quickly. Now we can focus on getting the rest of these guys down. And retrieving our Enchanted Torch. Cool. Uh, and then waiting for our Energy Pulse to re restore. So up there, by the way, is the Enchanted Torch that we're looking for. Uh, and that will require us to kind of get through... There's some Beastmasters protecting each beacon. There are Storm Beacons again, but this Enchanted Torch will make them glow all blue teal instead of uh, the other color. Um, so looking at this group, this group's actually not as bad because there's no Sages and there are no um, healers. So I'm not as worried about potential over aggro with this group. Just because while it's definitely going to be annoying and this boss needs to go down, like, lickety-split, because I don't want any of that business. Um, the rest of these are highly mitigated by Norgu and Elias. Okay, cool. No, not the Bone Staff, the Enchanted Torch. I was closer to the Bone Staff, so I have an, a button that selects nearest selectable thing that's not, like, nearest item. And uh, I was apparently close to the Bone Staff. Now what we need to do is clear out these um, Beastmasters. Which shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Why didn't you stop that, Norgu? You could have, but you didn't. Um, I'm not going to pick that axe up because I believe, oh, like this mission is literally over as soon as we light all three of these storm beacons. So I'm not actually too worried about it. And you can see that that's all teal magical energy now. Um, so that should be automatically given to me on the thing. Okay, cool. He stopped it this time. I am just not using enough energy to warrant go for the eyes. Go for the eyes doesn't do anything. It it gains me energy. That's what it does. It makes next hits m like more likely to critical hit, which means they're more likely to deal a bit of extra damage. But it's just not it's not substantial. Okay, I didn't drop gold, so I don't need to pick that up. Okay, and that should conclude it. Yep, there's our 2,000 experience and our 500 gold in the skill point. Already got the bonus. That's cool. The beacon, it's lit. The way must be clear. Now is our chance. We make for Grubel's Gulch. Apparently these cinematics are really awkward to actually make. The fighting has stopped. They must have had too much ale tonight. No. That was no brawl. I could swear I heard the shouts of men. What would men be doing on Shiver Peak? I do not know. These are strange days. Sir. The beacon has been lit! Impossible! The stone summit would never abandon their posts. The flames burn brightly, sir! And there is more! 
A band of men are marching for the goat. They're approaching the gate. So, it was men who lit the beacon. Whoever it was, they had to get through Dagnar's men. Dagnar's leader of the Stone Summit. Any enemy of the Stone Summit is a friend of Delrimor. Open the gate. Captain, prepare quarters. Yay. We made Dorvan friends. I am Brechtor Ironhammer, Lord of Grubel's Gulch. I am Rorik of Ascalon. Your brother, the king, speaks highly of your hospitality. My brother tells the truth. What brings you here? I'm leading these refugees over the Shiver Peaks. We wish to cross Borless Pass into the human kingdom of Kryta. Well then, Rurik of Ascalon, welcome to Grubel's Gulch. You are free to stay with us as long as you will. Thank you, mountain friend. Rin is forever in your debt. However much authority he has to say that line, I don't know, but... Given that he was just disowned by his father before we headed in here. Which makes that dubious. Welcome to the Frostgate. This is actually the outpost for the next mission. Uh, as you can see, we did get the stone, or the, the summit axe. Oh, probably more clear my inventory between episodes, but I wanted to end this episode on reading about Borless Pass. And it says, Prince Rurik moved the refugees swiftly into the mountains, leaving the young hero to protect the rear. As they worked their way higher and higher into the snowy pass, the young hero found this frigid land held its own challenges. For one thing, the Deldrimer dwarves were locked in bitter civil war with their cousins of the Stone Summit, who violently opposed incursions of any kind into their territory. As they marched through the pass, the refugees had to light storm beacons to signal that authorized travelers sought passage. But these beacons held no sway with the Stone Summit, and our hero had to clear a path through to Crox Hollow. Okay, so Crox Hollow was the place where we talked to Jalus Ironhammer. Uh, and then on to Grubel's Gulch where the refugees stopped to prepare to pass through the Frost Gate, a, ter a, a territory held by the merciless, merciless Stone Summit Dwarves. So, I think this is really interesting. If we click on the Frost Gate, um, it tells us about this mission, uh, which specifically the Frost Gate was built built by the Deldrimer Dwarves as a way to protect their homes from invaders coming through Borless Pass. When Civil War broke out, the gate fell into the hands of the Stone Summit, a xenophobic group of Dwarven renegades who were trying to overthrow King Jealous Ironhammer. They're led by Dagnar Stonepaint. Now, no one gets through the pass unless the summit allows it. But, this is something that is not very well explained. We are in Grubel's Gulch right now. Um... The, the last mission took us to light the beacon somewhere in this general vicinity, I guess. And now we're we're actually in Grubel's Gulch, which I think is really interesting. Um, and it's not well explained. But he says, it was here in Grubel's Gulch, right, that a bunch of stuff happened. So uh, I think that's a really neat detail that is easily overlooked. Just because it's not well called like the outpost is called the frost gate because it's the name of the mission it's not called uh off after what it is so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode here so until next time everyone take care bye bye